Hello there, guys, and welcome to this live stream. This is Q8 Pilot, your host for today's show, and today we're going to be flying the Phenom 300 by Arabesque, one of uh, my recently becoming favorite air aircraft in uh, X Plane 11, uh, one of the uh, better uh, lighter jets uh, created by Arabesque, and one of their um, actually very high quality lineup of uh, aircraft. Uh, Arabesque are known for creating uh, phenomenal uh, aircraft and this Phenom is one of uh, the phenomenal aircraft created by Arabesque. Uh, I haven't seen anything from Arabesque that is not high quality. So uh, I'm very excited to uh, fly this uh, aircraft uh, tonight uh, from Visalia to John Wayne International Airport in the state of California. I uh, want to welcome all of you guys uh, to the stream. We've got uh, with us Sven from Germany, Alex. Uh, ooh, what did I do here? Uh, we've got, um, is it Edge and Salt Grater, uh, Tobro, Conrad, Scott. Hello there, my friend, and welcome. We've got Steve1927. And uh, let's see, we've got Lucas, Stan, hello there, my friend, and welcome. Welcome, everyone. We've got Imran. Hello there, Imran, Omar. Uh, hello there, guys. Uh, welcome. And of course, as it is always the case on the Q8 Pilot channel, a giveaway is now in progress to win a free copy of this beautiful light jet by Embraer. And uh, it should be open. Uh, the giveaway should be open now. And uh, all you need to do to enter the giveaway is type in exclamation EMB505. That will get you into the giveaway to win a copy of this aircraft courtesy of the Q8 Pilot channel. So. What we're going to be doing today is uh, we're going to be starting the aircraft from the cold and dark state and uh, we're going to be uh, taking off. Uh, let me just make sure that uh, Sim Toolkit Pro is, uh, I've got a lot of stuff open here. Uh, so let me kill my email and let me kill the browser here. And yeah, so let's uh, bring up uh, Sim Toolkit Pro and for that we are going to come here. I've already programmed the flight plan, so all we need to do, we're going to be using Active Sky XP today for weather generation. And uh, we're going to say restore last flight, uh, connect X plane, and voila, we've got uh, the flight plan here. As you can see, we're going to be taking off from Visalia, runway 30 through the Tulare uh, VOR uh, to uh, Sierra Lima, India into John Wayne International in Orange County, California. And we're going to be doing an eyeless approach today to runway 20 right. Weather is looking pretty good here in Visalia. And uh, generally speaking, in California, the weather is uh, pretty cool. Just look at this aircraft. Uh, just uh, Arabesque uh, have really set the bar very high with the uh, rendition of the Phenom 300 for X-Plane 11. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, uh, the passenger cabin as soon as we are airborne, and we're going to take a look at some of the features as we go. I'm not sure what has happened here. We're not seeing the sim, yeah. All right, you should be able to see the sim in just a moment here. Right, let me see what's going on here. This is the live scene. I'm not sure why you guys are not seeing it. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure why you guys are not seeing the... Uh, All right, you guys are seeing the sim now. All right, perfect. All right, cool. I still can't actually see it on my screen uh, for some reason. And 
I am not sure why. Let me see here. All right, here we go. Now we can see the sim. Bold's looking good, finally. I always uh, have those glitches uh, when I start. Uh, it's either the mic or it's the, uh, you know, the software. You know when, when you don't actually stream for, for some time, you know, you get rusty. And, uh, but yeah, uh, we are good now. Let's go ahead and uh, hop into the cockpit. Just one has to admire the beauty of the, uh, the, the graphics, uh, just really an excellent, exquisite aircraft in terms of the texturing uh, all around. If you just look at this aircraft, uh, we can look here and just look at all the textures, the passenger cabin, you know, everything is just modeled with so much care and attention to detail. It's just really fabulous, fabulous aircraft, really, by um, Arabesque. All right, so let's go ahead and start things up. We are going to uh, come down here and we're going to turn on battery one, battery two. The sounds are just absolutely gorgeous on this aircraft. And oxygen, uh, let's go ahead and turn on the bus ties on auto. We are going to bring up the uh, GPU. So I'm not sure why Arabesque uh, removed the Arabesque button here, probably for extra realism. So the, there used to be an Arabesque button here to bring up the control panel, but they moved this here to the aircraft registration number for some reason. System test. Okay. All right, and uh, let's see here. We are going to come down here and open the GPU panel and connect the ground power unit. We're going to remove the static elements. We're going to turn on the GPU. And bleeds on auto, X bleed on auto. Uh, let's go ahead and do the tests here. Fire test checks good. Electrical emergency lights are checked. Stall warning. You can see the shaker test as well here and ice protection all checked and everything is good all right next let's uh, check our fuel here uh, we're going to take a look at uh, sim toolkit pro and uh, we are hello there captain race from the uk hello there and hello fly guy uh florent edio games hello there my friends and uh, welcome. All right, so we are uh, going to be needing uh, 2,105 pounds of fuel. So let's go ahead and open the fuel panel. And for some reason, you have to disable X camera to go to the fuel camera fuel. So let's do that. Hmm doesn't want to go to it so we're just gonna do it ourselves here not sure why all right there we go all right all right let's open the uh, fuel cap and we need 2,105 pounds of fuel. Uh, so yeah, we need a little more. We're gonna put 120. And now the aircraft is refueling. As soon as the refueling is done, we can just close this and get going. Shouldn't take very long. Uh, again, really nice uh, details uh, from Arabesque. All right, all is good. And we can now turn this off, turn this off, and put the fuel cap back on and close the fuel door. Perfect. Let's go back to the cockpit. Uh, we'll worry about the flight plan in just a moment. 
All right, so we're going to take uh, ECAS both here, and uh, we can see a lot of uh, messages there. So let's head over here and arm the emergency light. Let's go ahead and turn on the nav lights as well, and let's see here. All right, I think we're ready to uh, start programming our flight plan. Uh, let's make sure our hydraulics are on, pumps are on auto, which is okay. And we're going to turn on the passenger seatbelt signs. And uh, just as a reminder, folks, uh, the giveaway uh, giveaway should be turned on. Uh, let me see here. One second. Let's see here. All right, let me check it out for you guys. And the giveaway is All right, so the giveaway should be started now. So again, if you can just uh, type in exclamation EMB 505, should be able to, uh, you should be able to uh, uh, register and enter the giveaway. If not, I'll stop it and start it again. Let's just uh, take a look here. Fresh. All right, I'm just checking the uh, giveaway for you guys just to make sure that you guys are able to enter. All right, let's see here. All right, let me turn off the cloud bot and turn it back on. All right. All right, if you guys can give it a try now, um, exclamation EMB 505 should get you in. Blame it on the Streamlabs OBS. All right, perfect. I do have all the entries now, so the giveaway is working perfectly okay. Perfect. Good stuff. Let's uh, continue. Uh, we've got everything done here, everything done here. Let's go ahead and uh, program our flight plan. Our flight plan is actually quite simple. Uh, let me delete everything here. Delete the flight plan. All right, so we are at Visalia, and Visalia, by the way, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the areas in the San Joaquin Valley, uh, and it is not very far from uh, L.A., I always used to pass Visalia on my way to L.A. Uh, on uh, Route 99, Highway 99. Uh, so we're at Visalia, and we are going to... Right, oops, I'm not... That's not what I wanted to do. Clear that. All right. So let's bring up uh, Sim Toolkit Pro. And we are going to just put this here on always top. And we're going to take a look at our... So we're going to fly direct to TTE, which is, I believe, the Tillery uh, VOR. So Tango Tango Echo. And enter. And then we're going to fly direct to Sierra Lima, India. Sierra Lima, India. And enter that. And finally, it's our destination, which is John Wayne International. Kilo Sierra, November Alpha. And we are going to procedure. We're going to select the approach, enter, and we're going to be doing ILS runway 20 right. I'm going to enter that, and we're going to use the Sierra Lima India transition into John Wayne. 
So we're going to enter that and we're going to load it. All right. So everything, that's our flight plan and uh, we are good now. Uh, let's hide this. And uh, we are looking pretty okay. I just love the G1000 on this aircraft. It's so much fun, so easy. And also, it's actually pretty easy to manipulate everything here as well. So let's go ahead and set the speed to about 100, 200, 200 knots. Actually, let me put it at 240. 220 to begin with and then we'll increase it to 240 uh, the altitude is 17,000 feet for our flight today should be sufficient to clear the mountains on our way to John Wayne and let's check our altimeter altimeter is 2991 which is already set. Um, everything is set here. Altitude is set. Everything is looking pretty good. All right. Engine ignitions to auto. And everything else is looking pretty good now. All right. Now it's time for us to close the doors. So we're going to bring up the control panel here again. Close passenger door. Close baggage. And we're just going to leave the GPU panel now. Uh, as, uh, as soon as we start the uh, right engine, we're going to kill the GPU. And uh, we'll work from the generators. Carl, hello there, my friend, and welcome. Kevin, hello there, my friend. Otavio. Dr. or Drehard, hello there, my friend. Welcome. Uh, welcome everyone and uh, really uh, excited to fly this uh, Phenom today. Uh, very glad that you're all here and able to make it. I want to thank you all for your support. And uh, okay, so all we need to do now is uh, start the engine. We're going to set the altimeter here as well to 2991. And all is looking good and we're ready to start the engines. We're going to start with the right engine right right engine is now starting listen to those sounds Perfect, we have a good start on the right engine, so what we can do now is kill the GPU, but first we're going to turn on the generator and kill the GPU, and now we can dismiss the ground power unit. So we're going to dismiss ground power unit, close the GPU panel, and we are now good. All right, let's start the uh, engine number one, and engine number one is now starting. All right, and uh, we can now turn on the generator. Generator on auto and all is looking good now. Perfect. What is the maximum range of the Phenom? Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't looked through the manual, uh, but I would assume for a light jet, probably in the uh, 34, maybe 36,000 feet. Uh, I would assume, but if uh, anybody knows, uh, please uh, do let us know. All right, let's, uh, let's bring up the yoke and uh, landing taxi light to taxi. Uh, we worry about the strobes later. All is looking good. All right, we can uh, do a quick check on the electrical. Fuel is balanced, looking good and doors are closed anti-ice is operational per design intent perfect all right 
we're good to go. Uh, one thing I do want to do here is, uh, let's see here. Track north. No, that's fine. All right. Perfect. We're going to bring up the uh, PFD. Let's bring up the DME. That's, uh, I believe, that's the frequency for the ILS uh, at... Uh, Uh, at John Wayne. Why is it not showing? Hmm. Ah. All right. Let's go back to the flight plan. And menu. Activate. There we go. Now, if we go here. All right, so that's the next waypoint. Uh, so now everything is looking good. Perfect. All right, all engines are ready. And the aircraft is looking good. Let's release the parking brake. Flaps one for departure. And off we go. Look at this beauty. <laughs> Almost hit the uh, light pole there. So yeah, this this aircraft is amongst the very few um, aircraft that has received the Q8 Pilot Platinum Award, and I think I've awarded this. Uh, this is the highest Q8 Pilot Award, uh, and normally when I see an aircraft of this quality, uh, features a very finished aircraft, very well polished, uh, everything is thought of. Uh, carefully and everything is executed exquisitely uh, in the sounds department in the graphics and the simulation and if you've seen the uh, if you've seen the recent live stream from V1 simulations and he's a real world pilot uh, he vouches actually for this aircraft uh, in terms of the ground handling uh, the flight model how it handles up in the air uh, so we have actually a testimony from a real-world pilot to the quality and the deep system simulations uh, that Airbask has integrated in this Phenom 300. Absolutely gorgeous uh, aircraft. Right, we're heading to runway 30 for departure. And all's looking good. Lucas, hello there, my friend. Diego, hello there, my friend. Fly guy, hello there. All right, let's bring up the flight director. Flight director is on. And by the way, the scenery uh, that you see is the default scenery that comes with Orbex True Earth, California, uh, but the John Wayne Airport is a payware scenery, the, our arrival airport, and if you're interested in the arrival airport, just type exclamation ARR, and it should uh, provide you with the airport ICO code, as well as the link uh, to purchase uh, the airport. Hello there, my friend from Greece, and welcome. Glad to have you here.
they've done really very good job with the uh, synthetic vision uh, as well, which we are using in this uh, in this uh, stream today. All right, this is the turn to runway three zero. Landing lights, strobes. Just look at that. You see how well the lights are as well on the aircraft belly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are cleared for takeoff and uh, Scott Rashley. On runway three zero. All righty. We are ready to go and we're going to release the parking brake. And we're gonna, this is the toga. Um, so let me, let me just do this. Let me see if I can bring this a little back here. All right, there we go. I love the uh, synthetic vision. By the way, we did not set our V speeds, but we're going to rotate at about 120. That's one thing I forgot to do. 120 knots and rotate. Pause rate, gear is going up. Right, and we're going to set the power to climb. And let's begin our turn. Flaps up. Beautiful uh, scenery by Orbex. doing okay by the way uh, hand flying this aircraft is a serious joy uh, it's a lot of fun hand flying this aircraft aircraft a little bit and we continue our climb there we go and at this point we can go and say nav autopilot yaw damper and light change. There we go. Ch 
should adjust the vertical speed uh, to reach about 220. That's what we want. We want 220. There we go. So we should, uh, all right, we're approaching 10,000 feet. So we're going to kill the landing light. And everything else is cool. Right, how about we take a look at some external views? Some wing view, just look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful, beautiful view from uh, the passenger perspective here uh, from the Phenom 300. Beautiful texturing as well. Chief Sim Pilot, hello there, my friend. Pleasure to have you with us. tell you guys this aircraft is one that I highly recommend and it is indeed a lot of fun to fly and that's us right there and uh, we're climbing to 17,000 feet Yeah, Scott, I agree. The, uh, the Windflex, everything is actually on this aircraft is very beautifully modeled. And uh, really another reason that I really like X-Plane is the aircraft uh, that we get of this fidelity. Right, 17,000 feet. Uh, there is no auto throttle on this aircraft, so we have to adjust the power to maintain our speed. And we're going to keep it at about 230 knots or so. Perfect. All right, 17,000 feet, 228 knots. And we are looking good. About 13.5 uh, nautical miles to, le to reach the Teleri VOR. And from that point forward to the Sierra Lima, India which is our transition into John Wayne International. And you can see the, uh, the mountains uh, up ahead here, uh, beautiful, uh, again, scenery of, of California. And uh, we should arrive at around dusk, so we should be able to see some lights at John Wayne. Uh, the approach is quite spectacular, uh, just coming from the mountainside. Uh, normally gives uh, for a very uh, beautiful approach into John Wayne. Right, so let's take a look here at the passenger cabin. And uh, by the way, very interactive again. If, so the door is uh, something that you can open from within the uh, from within the uh, ca passenger cabin, as you can see here, it's clickable. And uh, one of the nice things is that if you go back here, the actually the toilet flushes. <laughs> you can use the shades. Not sure if you can use the sink as well. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe not. Uh, but what I really like is uh, is this little guy here. So this shows you the actual uh, flight, the destination. So we are uh, departing Visalia Municipal Airport to Orange County, John Wayne International. Current altitude 17,000 shows you where you are and the trip and the time in UTC. 
which is uh, pretty cool. Of course, uh, standard with Arabesque, you can always open the passenger tray and have a cup of coffee. And you can do this on both sides. So really a nice, uh, you know, nice touch there by Arabesque. It's a newspaper there. So really, really a fine aircraft in terms of interactivity, simulation, sounds, texturing, graphics. Uh, really a fun aircraft to fly and one that I highly recommend uh, by Arabesque. All right, so we are now heading over to Sierra Lima, India. And let me just give you guys a uh, quick view of the outside. Everything is done immaculately on this aircraft, really. All right, so all's looking good. Uh, by the way, you can pop these, uh, you can pop the displays out if you want, uh, and you can manipulate the, uh, so you can manipulate the, uh, the frequencies here just by hovering the mouse. Same thing here. Same thing for the heading, and of course. And by the way, we need to click here to align the heading with the current heading of the aircraft so again they really thought of everything uh, really fine attention to details uh, with this aircraft it's really really beautiful aircraft so that's how you pop so you can pop the as you can see here you can pop the display and you can still manipulate all the knobs and the switches uh, just as if it was on popped So in terms of usability, I think, and user friendliness, uh, again, Aerobast really excels in that department. Uh, they used to have the control panel here as a little icon that shows Aerobast, uh, but I think they kind of moved away from that. And by the way, this has uh, complete integration with Avitab. So uh, we have now Avitab here, and you can use it for getting about 64 FPS. And if you don't want heavy tab, you just I think click somewhere here, and then you get rid of it. All right, so folks, we are not going to get any T T D. Uh, it's my phone. We're not going to get the top of descent uh, warning or sign or anything like that. So what we're going to need to do is calculate it. And if we bring up the flight plan here, and we, let's go ahead and pop this out. All right. So we are, uh, we are at um, Sierra Lima, India, and we are going to, let's see, the destination is in about 121 nautical miles. So from that point forward, we have about 11 nautical miles to reach John Wayne. So that's the 11 into Sager. And then there is a hold. What we're going to do is we're, once we are at Sager, we are going to fly direct to Snake. And then from Snake, it's uh, pretty much uh, about 5, 7.4, 9.4, 9.6, another 10 nautical miles. So uh, we are at 17,000 and we want to descend to 2,500, which is the platform altitude at John Wayne Runway 20, right? Uh, so that leaves us, uh, let's see, 17, let's say minus two, that's 15 times three, 45, and we're gonna add 10 nautical miles for contingency. So that's about 55 nautical miles out. Uh, we're going to begin our descent. So, and we're going to be descending to 2,500. So, once we see 55 remaining here, uh, we're going to begin our descent to 2,500. 
as you can see the synthetic vision again looks uh, looks really really good there uh, you can see it better here uh, very well done by arabesque lovely Noah how are you there my friend uh, we've got Rourke uh aviation zurich hello there my friend when i flew the el toro in the 80s 90s uh, from john wayne still 19 right it changed late in the 90s if i recall oh that's good to know carl thanks for the uh thanks for the information uh really appreciate it so i still guys i still am not very excited about microsoft flight simulator uh i know oh by the way uh, yeah and the reason being is performance issues is one and there aren't really that many aircraft i do like flying the uh, piper aero 3 by just flight i think it's a well-made aircraft and the fly-by-wire project is uh, now actually a separate uh, so they've separated, they branched off the Asobo aircraft and they have now their own add-on. It is of course still based uh, on the Asobo aircraft, but just to manage compatibility uh, issues, uh, they've uh, moved away and they kind of branched off uh, so that they can uh, avoid compatibility issues when a new update of the sim is released. Um, Having said this, I still just don't find it, I don't find it very fulfilling at this point. Scenery is great, there's a lot of fun add-ons that you can have. Multiplayer is the way to go for with the Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is lacking in uh, X-Plane, but it is uh, natively available in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. But multiplayer is, uh, believe it or not, is still not really my thing and uh yeah i mean i still enjoy microsoft flight simulator don't get me wrong but it's not my preferred sim at this point yeah i still enjoy um x-plane more than i enjoy uh, flight simulator. here is some external view for you guys Absolutely gorgeous aircraft. Right, we are at 99 nautical miles, so another 40 or so, and uh, we are going to begin our descent towards uh, John Wayne. Everything's looking good, aircraft systems are good, speed is good, and we are cruising at 17,000 feet. Hi Q8, are you using, what are you using for clouds? I'm using the X-Vision um, uh, version 2 uh, with the Nordic Extreme preset. Stan says, couldn't agree more regarding Microsoft Flight Simulator, very much a game versus x approach. Yes, and I think um, Stan, to your point, I think that it's going to be very difficult to emulate what x does because x uses blade element theory for calculations of the, uh, of the effect of the wind on the aircraft airfoil. And that calculation, in my view, is far more accurate. And I've read a lot about blade element theory and uh, the lookup table methodology used by the ESB platform. And uh, definitely it's going to be very difficult to emulate what x does in terms of the realism uh, for the flight model. So where one is an approximation, the other is... Uh, and so uh, uh, definitely x is going to be more accurate in terms of the flight model simulation.
The flight, uh, Bobby, yes, I do agree with you. The flight dynamics in, uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator are, are kind of weird sometimes, especially when you're flying airliners. I don't feel as much with the general aviation aircraft, but definitely with the airliners as I come into land, for example, the Airbus or the 747, it feels extremely weird. All right, let's take a look at the external view here. God, I love orbit scenery. Look at that. And X-Plane looks, you know, pretty realistic with, uh, you know, with the uh, ortho photos and the Orbex True Earth uh, scenery. It looks uh, pretty, pretty good. All right, let's see, 84, we're still quite a way from our destination but in approximately 30 nautical miles, we are gonna begin our descent and we're gonna also reduce our speed. Uh, good evening, Captain from Rotterdam, Netherlands. Hello there, Danny, and welcome. Daniel, hello there, my friend. And welcome to all of those of you who's, uh, who've joined us uh, in the stream. And I didn't get a chance to greet you, I'm sorry. Uh, but I haven't really been keeping too much with the chat here. Uh, we've got Maverick with us. The landing in MSF-20 in airlines is weird, is like not real. And explain the landing are better. You can feel the landing. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would agree with you. James. Uh, says I enjoy uh, MSFS, but have two major grips on it. The first is no multi-monitor support. The second is even though the world map is amazing, the elevation sucks <laughs> when you do a low-level flight over a highway. Um, Kevin says maybe QA could help me sometime with adding new custom scenery. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you can head over to my Discord channel and there is a uh, help, so either myself or any member of the Discord server will be able to help you. Uh, the invite to the Discord server is available in the channel links on my main uh, YouTube channel page. Jeff, hello there, my friend. Am I happy with my new computer? Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. It's, it's a very powerful machine. And there got, you've got the Discord invite uh, by Streamlabs in the chat. If you click on that, uh, you will be taken to my Discord server where uh, you can get help from either myself or others. You're most welcome, Kevin. My pleasure always. Just look at that. Beautiful. All right, let's see. About 20, about 15 nautical miles, guys, and we're going to begin our descent. You can see with the, from the synthetic vision, we can see the, uh, can see the sea. And so this is an indication that we're getting pretty close to Los Angeles area and uh, specifically Orange County. The airport is somewhere to our left. Uh, and uh, yeah. Looks pretty good. By the way, this scenery uh, looks better during uh, daytime. I'm gonna be brave and change the time a bit to, uh, to show you guys this is what it looks like here. Just look at that. It's really fantastic scenery of uh, Orbic True Earth. Let 
me change the time back so we can arrive into John Wayne. Maybe with some lights. Hopefully it won't crash the sim. <laughs> but yeah, you can see the synthetic vision is done quite well uh, by Arabesque. All right. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the ILS frequency, which is the correct frequency here. It's 111.75, 11, and that's what's set here in NAV1 radio. So we are good there. And we will begin our descent in about five nautical miles. So let's go ahead and set the altitude to 2,500 feet. Twenty five hundred and we're gonna grab the altimeter real quick. So let's look at the weather. As you can see the uh three two thirty seven knots uh scattered at nineteen hundred broken at twenty five hundred temperature is eighteen Celsius and the altimeter is two nine or eight three two nine or eight three we're gonna set that And we are going to now begin the descent. All right. So to begin the descent, we are going to set the speed to 210. And we're going to click on, I'm not sure why, by the way, VNAV. I'm not sure how VNAV functions in this aircraft. But we're going to go to vertical speed. And we're going to begin the descent at about 1,000 feet per minute. And then if you click on flight change, then it should take care of it. And of course it wants to reduce the speed so what we can do is uh... all right never mind let's just use vertical speed for now and we're gonna go at a thousand feet per minute I'm gonna reach our the throttle And we're going to go to 210 knots. There we go. And what we are going to do as well is we are going to go to procedure and we are going to activate the approach enter and now the approach is activated that's our turn into Sager and then into John Wayne runway 20 let me reduce our rate of descent just a bit We'll go to about 800 feet per minute. And let's see if flight change works now. Yeah, works perfectly okay now. Just look at that. So you want to see the uh, Airbus control panel. So the control panel has the ground options. This is where you can manipulate the fuel and what have you, passengers and luggage. Uh, this is where you open the doors. Uh, the V-speeds are set here, and we're actually going to set the landing speed here to about 115. VRF 115. Uh, we'll leave this. Enable automatic thr thrust reverse uh, ATR. Uh, so you can toggle this on and off. Uh, more options, so this is what you can do. You can enable instrument reflections, windshield reflections, show a compiler some you know, visuals there. Uh, you also have the ability to change the G1000 fuel in pounds, pounds per hour, uh, show ground speed in the PFD, and so on and so forth. 
uh, some um, options there for the touch screen features pop out and the bezels and the knobs and all of that good stuff. This is where you enable the synthetic vision, which by the way shows that it's uh, experimental at this point. Uh, but to me, it looks fabulous, it looks perfect. Um, and then you've got the option to go from topology to topology and terrain. Uh, you can use the transparency or the HSI rose transparency between medium full and opaque. More options here, uh, the sounds, uh, this is what I have the sounds set and then the about section here, which got the, uh, uh, the team, uh, the beta testers, as well as the Arabesque team who've uh, developed the uh, aircraft. Down to 13,000 feet, uh, we're gonna set the altimeter to 2983. 2983 is now set. And just look at that, folks. That looks amazing. Smooth, uh, very easy on the frames. So if we bring up the Abbey tab, we're getting about 40 frames, 41 frames. And by the way, the Los Angeles area is, uh, is an involved area in terms of the uh, scenery and the objects. And so that's why we went down from the 60 FPS and I have the world objects at maximum. So my settings are quite high and therefore, you know, still getting 40 FPS with the uh, textures of this aircraft and the fidelity and just everything else, just fabulous. So that's our turn here. If we zoom in, that's uh, the transition, uh, the Sierra Lima, India transition. We're gonna go to Sager here, and then we're gonna make a turn into Snake, intercept the ILS, runway 20 John Wayne, and land the aircraft. We're still looking good in terms of our altitude. One thing I'm not sure why, but on all the Arabesque aircraft, once the mouse is hovering over the display, you can't actually move. So I'm right clicking, but you can't actually change the view. You have to be outside to be able to, you know, move the view around. So you can't do it while you're on the display, while the mouse is hovering on the display. Just a quick reminder, folks, that the uh, giveaway is still going on. And uh, to enter the giveaway, you just type in exclamation EMB 505. All right, folks, we are approaching 10,000 feet. Landing lights are on. Welcome to Los Angeles. Beautiful. Uh, California is a very dear place to my heart. I lived in California for some nine years back in the 90s. Just gorgeous scenery by Orbex. All right, at this point, we're gonna start reducing our speed a little bit. Uh, let's see here. We're gonna go down to 200, 200 knots. Now, with the uh, flight change enabled, once you reach the speed, the aircraft should begin descending again. There you go, as you can see now, the uh, we've begun the descent again.
Yeah, I, I wasn't sure how to use a VNAV, uh, so I'm just kind of doing my own thing here. But so many, so much details in, in this Air Basque aircraft. And the nice thing is you can do everything from within the, uh, the X-1000 here. 8,000 feet, we're looking good. And we have the frequency set. And as you can see now, we can also see the distance to the ILS, uh, which is about 25.5 nautical miles. Down to 7,000, and here comes our turn uh, at the Sierra Lima India transition. By the way, John Wayne Airport is right there somewhere. So, right off the mountains, there, we're going to make the turn back to uh, Snake and then from Snake to the airport. Simon, are you still using Experialistic version 2? Yes, sir. Oh, is it Seal Beach? Oh, thanks, Carl, for that. Appreciate it. Take care, Noah. And uh, if you need anything, of course, uh, on the Discord, I'll be sure to check it out yeah i love the name of those transitions uh mohanad thank you very much my friend and i wish you the same do i use reshade no i don't use reshade anymore uh to be frank all right, we are now descending over to... So that's our turn now. Uh, if we can bring this up here. So that's uh, it's a bit cluttered here, but you can see this is our turn. And this is uh, Sager, and this is Snake. So right here, when we reach this point here, right before the hold, uh, we are going to switch to fly direct to Snake. And it should uh, that's Lemon. <laughs> Uh, and that should take us right to uh, runway uh, 20 at uh, John Wayne Airport. All right, at this point, we're going to start reducing our speed uh, just slightly here to 190 knots. And again, as we stabilize at 190, you will see that uh, we begin the descent once more until we reach the final platform altitude of 2,500 feet uh, for, runway, uh, for runway 20 right. There goes the turn. Just look at this scenery. Gorgeous, gorgeous scenery by um, Orbex. I tend to like the Orbex scenery more than I like the Orthos in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For some reason, they appear a little washed out in, uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but those are, I believe, hand-colored uh, hand by the Orbex team, and they look very realistic. 
All right. So if we take a look at our flight plan, we are now at Sager. And as you can see here, there is a hold. So once we are, this is uh, it's about 16 nautical miles. So once we are at about two nautical miles or so, we're going to fly direct and then we should be fine. We're looking good. And we're going to begin reducing our speed momentarily. All right, let's go ahead and reduce our speed to 180 knots. Fourteen point two nautical miles. And you can see also the DME for NAV1 on NAV1, 111.75, uh, which is the ILS frequency in 10.3 nautical miles. That's uh, John Wayne. All right, at 180 knots, uh, we could actually uh, uh, go flaps one. All right. All right I'm going to use uh, vertical speed uh, to slightly increase our rate of descent as we get closer to our turn. So here's what we're going to do now, folks. We are going to come here to the flight plan. All right, and we're going to select. No, 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 no. that's not what I wanted to do. Sagger, hold, snake. All right, and then we're going to fly direct to Snake, activate, and enter. Let's make sure we maintain our speed. And now... We're going to switch this to uh, let's go back localizer one and we're going to go to approach That's the runway right there. Right, here's the ILS glide slope and localizer. And now the aircraft is aligning 
to the runway. We're a bit fast here. So I'm going to just idle the throttle here just a bit. And I think our speed is safe to go to flaps one. Speed check. Speed. Nah, come on. Alright, let's go ahead and lower the landing gear. That will help us slow down a bit. Alrighty, some crosswind there. Flaps one. And we're going to maintain about 115 knots. Tell you feels so good flying this aircraft. Right, 100 cent speed check, flaps two. We are on the localizer and the glide slope. All's looking good. And flaps full. We're looking good, speed is good. At this point, I think we can disconnect the autopilot and take over. Oh, come on. Approaching two, zero, right. All right, my aircraft. Tell you some serious wind there. Five hundred. Two whites, two red still. We're looking good. Long landing, long landing, 4,000 feet remaining, 3,000 remaining. And welcome to John Wayne International Airport. A bit of a floater there, nothing too serious though. And uh, you guys should have the landing rate. Wow, what a beautiful aircraft to fly. Real joy to fly this Airbask Phenom 300. Really enjoyed it. Beautiful scenery. Just, I enjoyed this dream so much, folks. 
and I hope that you've enjoyed it as, as, mu as much as I did. Uh, it was w really one of the better streams in my view. Uh, really, really enjoyed uh, doing this, uh, this stream with this aircraft in this specific location. By the way, this John Wayne scenery is a payware uh, scenery, blends perfectly well with uh, Orbex, uh, True Earth, California. Highly recommended scenery if you like flying in this part of the world. And uh, yeah, I remember I did uh, some of my pilot edge flying using uh, the scenery. Zero, two, right. All right, so we're not gonna uh, we're we're not gonna taxi all the way to uh, to the gate. I think we're just gonna bring the aircraft to a stop somewhere here, and uh, we're gonna take a look at the replay, and then we're gonna take a look at the uh, the giveaway winner. All right, let's uh, set the parking brake. The parking brake is set. And we can kill the lights, strobes, we can kill, and we can um, stop the engines. All right, let's take a look at the landing, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. <laughs> I'm not sure what that take is, but okay. That's better. Let's see here. Wing view. Oh, just look at that. That's really cool, guys. How about we, uh, let's take a look here. How about that? Tell you guys, this is one hell of an aircraft for X-Plane 11. It receives my highest commendations. Brilliant. All the details, sounds, wow. Brilliant aircraft. All right. By the way, did you guys get the landing rate? Uh, let's see here. Uh, minus 64 FPM. Well, yeah, considering it was a floater, so not the best of landings. But, you know, 
That was all right, I think. Uh, all right, let me take a look at uh, the giveaway here. And I'm going to tell you guys how many entries do we have. Let's see. All right, so we, ladies and gentlemen, have uh, 221 entries into this giveaway. And we're going to go ahead and close the entries now. And all right, here we go. And the winner is, ladies and gentlemen, Ben Behan is the winner. Ben Behan. So Ben B H N. Congratulations, Ben. And if you are still with us, uh, please uh, just acknowledge and uh, the prize uh, will be provided to you via a gift voucher uh, at the Explain Org store where you can purchase the aircraft. Uh, if I can just uh, get An acknowledgement from Ben B H N. Minus one oh five FPM. Oh, so you got you guys got it on the screen as uh, minus one oh five. Good stuff. All right, so Ben, I need you to, uh, as one a free copy. Yeah, I'm not sure where Ben is, uh, but. All right, so I hope that Ben will, uh, will acknowledge the receipt. Uh, I just need some sort of a confirmation so I know who he is when he contacts me. Uh, but Ben, please uh, do send me an email at uh, info at q8pilot.com. Uh, I will need to verify your email address uh, associated with your username uh, on YouTube. So folks, uh, this is uh, pretty much it. Uh, this is what I wanted to share with you in this live stream. I really thoroughly enjoyed uh, this flight and flying in... Um, in this part of the world, of course, uh, again, California uh, is, uh, is a place that is extremely dear to my heart. And this Arabesque is, uh, is one of my absolute favorites. And uh, just to show you the scenery here, at, uh, let me go to exit the replay mode. And uh, just look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful uh, nights. Uh, night scenery here at, uh, at John Wayne Airport during nighttime uh, with the light mod that I use and again if you are interested in this uh, light mod uh, you can find it uh, on my discord channel uh, or by typing uh, exclamation lights in the chat uh, I believe uh, nightbot will respond with the uh, with the link uh, so yeah it's absolutely gorgeous I highly recommend it, and it doesn't, by the way, affect your FPS. So that's a, a tip for you guys. Uh, uh, again, for, for those of you who watch the stream, I hope that you, uh, you know, I try to give you guys all the add-ons that I use in every stream uh, so that you guys can enjoy the same experience. Um, that is it, really, for tonight's show. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and bye-bye for now.